and welcome back to the Wellness Check. I wanted to do a video today on some very brilliant questions that have come through about the process of brain spotting. Um, very curious questions and I love to answer and, and help people understand just the ins and outs of what brain spotting is, what it isn't, and technically what the limitations still are on what we know about the brain and how it works. So I want to go through some questions that viewers have asked over the past several months. So starting with something that just really does feel pretty amazing when you think about the process of brain spotting, is it true that there is a spot in our eyesight, in our visual field, that when you look at it, you feel activated? And activated could mean a couple different things. It could feel, or it could mean where you feel the most emotion, where your body most physiologically responds when you think about the stressor or the trigger or the traumatic event. Maybe you feel more anxious or more sad or more worked up or more angry. So we just use the word activated in this case. But is there a spot in our visual field where we can look at specifically when we think about that event or incident and feel activated? Yes, it's pretty amazing. And that's where some of the magic with the therapist comes in of being able to help you find that spot. And as you've seen with some of my other brain spotting videos, it's likely that inadvertently and unconsciously your mind and your eyes have gone to that spot. And there, and that will be another question in just a minute too. So let's just start with the basics of yes, there are spots in our visual field that are connected to our experiences. And whether or not we are working with a brain spotting therapist to find that spot and work through the trauma together, or you find yourself thinking about it or talking about it with a friend or a loved one and you notice or maybe your friend notices that your eyes sort of trail to one direction or the other. I'll be in my office with clients pretty frequently and they're talking about a story um, and in this story they are activated and I will see that their eyes go to a certain spot in the office. Maybe it's, maybe they're talking and they're kind of looking up here for a long time, or maybe they're kind of like looking down into the corner. And I just kind of, after they're done, they're done telling their story, I'll just kind of bring it to their attention, not knowing about brain spotting or anything like that. And they'll notice when they look at that spot, it all comes kind of flooding forward in a way. Whereas if they look at me or they look at an oppositional spot, it tends to not be as accessible the story or the details or maybe it just doesn't feel as activating the phrase for brain spotting you've heard me say it is where you look affects how you feel and the sister therapy to brain spotting is EMDR and with EMDR there is sort of a similar stance to it and it goes like this your brain wants to heal your brain knows how to heal and the more you and I stay out of its way, the better it will be. So I feel like both of those can kind of overlap on top of each other when it comes to trauma processing. Here's another question from one of the viewers. It is this, could it be possible that everyone's different and maybe that's not what happens? Right? Does everybody do this? Does everybody have a spot? If everybody looks at a certain spot in their visual field, would they have the same response? To that question is, once you kind of know about this, isn't it easy to kind of see if this is happening, right? Are we all just kind of wandering around, noticing everybody's eyes in certain positions? And what, what do we think about that? What is it doing for us in that moment? So the first question, the first part of this question anyways, to go back to is, does everybody do it? Yes, everybody does it. Can we say that everyone is doing deep trauma processing and officially doing brain spotting protocol? No, those are two different things. But it is something that we, that, that we unconsciously do. We look around in our visual field when we talk about things. And once you kind of know the skill or you've had brain spotting done to you, um, you will see it in your friends and your colleagues and strangers, you know, talking to you on the street. You see it. We all are doing it. Um, and as I say that, I'm kind of, I'm noticing, I'm looking over here a little bit. But 
Is it technically brain spotting trauma processing? No, not necessarily. Our brain, like I said, wants to heal, knows how to heal, and it'll do it with any chance that we give it. So the chance being we're talking to a friend and we're just really kind of letting out some thoughts and feelings, we're venting, and our eyes are situated in a certain place, that just kind of adds momentum to the what I call the expression of the the pressure release of that event. You can feel much better after talking to a friend and looking in a certain spot, but is it technically the protocol of brain spotting? Not so much. So yes, we all do it. Um, It is something that's kind of born within us. It's an innate thing that we do, much like a lot of other things that we do. I consider it a self-soothing technique. Um, We are built with all sorts of self-soothing techniques when we feel activated, nervous, scared, frightened. Um, We all engage in things that make us feel better and we don't even know we're doing it. So as a little sidebar, something that a lot of us do, we might kind of rock back and forth a little bit when we're talking about something. We might kind of just be you know, leaning our elbows on the table and we're kind of rubbing our arms a little bit. We're kind of giving ourselves some pressure right here as we talk about something that's activating. We might kind of clench our hands. Maybe it's in our lap, but we're clenching our hands or maybe we're scratching our fingernails. There's all sorts of things that we do when we're talking about activating things. And I believe that when we're just having casual conversation with someone and our eyes drift over into a certain spot, it's just a little pressure release and it helps us to feel better and manage our emotions in that time and maybe for the rest of the day. Okay, here's another question. I love this question. It's, it's this, if I keep my eyes shut for the rest of my life, is it possible that things won't feel so sensitive, my emotions won't feel so big? And that's actually a really, really great question. And it's worth talking about even on a bigger scale, that people who are blind, who have low vision or otherwise vision issues can still benefit from brain spotting. Someone that was even born blind can benefit and will benefit from brain spotting. So to answer the question, if you keep your eyes shut for the rest of your life, no, it will not help uh, with the sensitivity around the emotions. It's a very interesting thing. And while there is studied empirical research out there about how brain spotting works for um, the blind and hard of seeing individuals, it yet it's kind of yet to remain about how, how that happens, how our brain is capable of doing this. And yes, if we are going through things, an event, a traumatic event, and we have vision and we can see what's happening, that's one thing and it gets in, you know encoded into our brain in a certain way. But seeing it is not the only indication of what creates that neural network in your mind. Anytime we are stressed, overwhelmed, scared, frightened, something bad, sad, traumatic happens to us, our brain responds in a very specific way. And I've talked about that in my other videos too, so go check that out. Technically, we do not have to see what is happening in order to be fearful, in order to be scared, in order to be harmed, in order to walk away from an event feeling traumatized, right? I'm going to use the word traumatized, but we can just use the word really impacted. We don't have to see it in order to feel it. And it's the, it's the neurological experience of that event that gets encoded into our brain. I have clients that have for years done brain spotting in my office with their eyes closed, if you can believe that. So we can even find a spot in your visual field with your eyes closed. And it works very, very well. And some people prefer to do that because then they're not looking at birds and lamps and pictures on the wall. They're able to use the back of their eyelids as a canvas for whatever they need to experience and work through in that event that we're doing brain spotting with. So (laughs) I wish it was that simple. I wish we could just close our eyes and say, okay, I feel better. I can't see anything. I'm feeling better. But unfortunately, it's not the vision by itself that creates 
the spot in our visual field. It's the entire neurological, physiological experience of that event that gets encoded into our brain. Brilliant question. Okay, another one that comes to me is this. Some people might envision a brain spotting session being very quiet, maybe sitting you know, across your therapist in the office without really talking and just looking in your visual you know, field at your spot and doing um, trauma processing that way. Now, for individuals who are extremely uncomfortable talking about what's coming up, about the event, the trauma itself, it can be kind of quiet, but there still is dialogue. There's still the therapist checking in, the therapist is very attuned to the client at all times, making sure that the client is within that window of tolerance and is as regulated as possible and is going through the motions of the protocol safely and appropriately. So at no point are we just like scrolling on our phones while you're looking at a spot in the office doing deep tra trauma processing. Most of the time, it's actually very interactive, very interactive. Um, I always give clients a choice and that this choice can change from session to session and it's this. It's when we find the spot and you're, you're, you're at your activation spot and you're looking at that, feel free to say anything that is coming up. For instance, I feel a lump in my throat or I feel my muscles tensing up or I'm starting to sweat or maybe it's beginning to kind of what I call Rolodex or recount the pages of the story of that event. And that is a very interactive way to do the trauma processing and you're going back and forth and back and forth with the therapist who is right there with you, right there with you throughout every word and sentence of that story. And it feels very supportive. Um, so it's, it's more rare that it's very silent. And even if that person doesn't want to talk, the therapist is still checking in. We're making sure with, that you're within the window of tolerance. Um, and sometimes clients want to take breaks. <laughs> um, some of them can really rally and just do a full session of brain spotting, hardcore, and just there's tons of processing being done. And some people don't prefer that. They, they want to look at their spot for a little while. They're maybe talking or not talking, and then they want to take a break, and they want to break that gaze, and they want to look at you. They want to look at a real person and just kind of chat a little bit about what's coming up or add details to the story. And then they go back to their spot. And they vacillate back and forth and back and forth. So that's another option of what it kind of looks like in the therapy space. Another option is um, pendulating from an activation spot to a resource spot. Check out my videos on that. I'm not going to go into it today. But let's say this activation spot brings them to like a 9 out of 10. And they're just right on the edge of like this is too much. Well, we've also found a resource spot where when they look at that, it feels really grounding and calming. So clients, I mean, we are more intuitive than we think we are. So they have kind of found out about themselves. They, they've discovered that if they look at this spot for too long and they're rearing that high arc of like, okay, this is too much for me to process, they automatically will go to their resource spot and they'll look at that for a couple seconds and they'll bring it down to a three or four. And once they bring it down to a three or four out of 10, then they bring it right back to the activation spot. So it's kind of this undulating back and forth, I know myself and my limits type of processing. And when that happens, there's discussion about it sometimes. Sometimes it's just very organic and quiet. But I've never felt like someone is doing deep processing in here and feels alone or feels as though they're not saying anything, I guess. Because even before and after the processing, there's always debriefing. We leave enough space before the session to gear up and really you know, explore what we wanna target, but then after, there's processing and debriefing that happens. So we talk about, okay, how was that for you? What did you notice? Let's talk about the high points. Let's talk about your takeaways. Let's talk about what you wanna try this week or what you wanna be mindful of. There's always a flow of dialogue that's happening here. And, and I say that even with the people who prefer to do silent brain spotting. 
there's still a lot of discussion and, and padding around the processing itself. So I hope that helps to clear anything up of like, is someone just sitting in here for an hour looking at a spot and doing deep processing and nothing's really being said? Yeah, great question. A really good question that kind of follows up on that is, for those who do attend therapy, they know how good it can feel to just vent your um, stuff, your life stuff out, right? It feels good to just get it out and to talk about it, maybe cry, we emote, we do all of these things. It feels good to be able to do that for most people, not all people, but for most people, it just feels good. This is why we ask our girlfriends out for a cup of coffee and we just talk about life. It can feel good to let it out. And in this way, brain spotting does that, but to the nth degree. And I'll tell you why. When we assume talk therapy, individual talk therapy, which is therapist is on this side, clients on this side, we're chatting, we're talking about the stressors of life, the ups and downs of the week. It is, it is very helpful and it has its time and place. But the act of doing that type of therapy requires a very different part of your brain to be active. Individual talk therapy is all prefrontal cortex, this very large, bulbous, sophisticated part of our brain is engaged in online when we're doing this back and forth talking. So this is our information processing center, this is logic, this is rational thinking, problem solving, it's great. But it does not talk therapy does not access the part of the brain where trauma or really acute things are being held. So where that is being held is in the center core of your brain called your limbic system. And a lot of times, especially if there's trauma involved, the prefrontal cortex and the limbic system do not communicate well. And so like, um, Talk therapy is really good for finding solutions and trying this and seeing if it works and coping skills and all of those really helpful things, but it does not touch your limbic system. That's why brain spotting, EMDR, these limbic system therapies were developed because that activates that mid, mid, mid part center of your brain where those memories, where those feelings, beliefs are held. That's how it's different. So yes, it does feel really good to be able to, to come to your therapist and talk about the things and make a plan and develop new skills. And that I think is a great counterpart to the trauma work that's done that again, talks to the midbrain where the amygdala and the trauma is stored, okay? All the way in the middle of that brain. So yes, it's very common for people to come in maybe twice a week. And what I like to offer is if you come in twice a week, we can do brain spotting and deep trauma processing one time, and then we can just catch up and talk about life the next time. And it's also a really good kind of back and forth where it doesn't feel heavy every single time. You can work on also putting out the fires that kind of come to you throughout the week. And another way to do that is through two hour sessions or one and a half hour sessions where we just extend it. So there is time to do the trauma processing and brain spotting. And also we can pad that with, okay, tell me what happened with this person or at work or at home and let's figure out some skills to work through that. And I think they complement each other very, very well. Um, they just do different things. It, it occupies a different part of the brain. It heals in a different way. And I think both are very important. The last question I'm going to talk about today is um, something that reminds me of my video when I was talking about self brain spotting. And this is something that we are kind of unconsciously doing, like I said, all the time when we're by ourselves thinking about hard things, we can find that spot and it ramps up the intensity. Um, or if talking to a friend and we feel that activation and we're looking in a certain spot, that's kind of like self brain spotting in a nutshell, like a condensed easy version of it. Um, but that's not what brain spotting really is either. I want to just send a reminder that real true brain spotting is led by a brain spotting therapist. And there's an entire protocol that we work through. Um, in terms of you know the starting point and how we're processing and how we're working through and staying in that window of tolerance and 
real measurable, tangible ways of looking at how we're healing that trauma. Um, and then there's an endpoint. There's there's an actual measurable measurable endpoint as well. So the therapist is really doing a lot behind the scenes, even though it might not look like it in the office. There's a lot of things that we're looking at and checking off and navigating and you know kind of pushing over here or over there. Um, to suggest that even though you might find yourself in a situation where you're just kind of by yourself and you're thinking about things and it's feeling activated and you know the spots right over here, we just use a little caution with that because the whole point of brain spotting is not, well, there's a couple points, but one is to get the processing done in a safe, appropriate way, but also it takes another person, right? It takes that professional to really sit across from you and sympathize with you and really make sure that you're doing this safely and responsibly. If everybody were just kind of like in their own rooms by themselves, deep in their emotions and in their trauma, looking at a spot, we'd be in some big trouble. <laughs> we'd be in some big trouble. And I don't recommend that for anybody. Even if what you think you're thinking about is a, is a, on a smaller scale or something that might feel a little safe to work with, you never know where your mind's going to take it and it could take you to a deep, dark place pretty quickly. So that's why it's important to do this with a trained professional who is helping you work on the specific targets and keeping you safe and regulated in session and you know outside of session with skills that you're learning in therapy. Um, I don't encourage anyone to just sit with their thoughts for a really long time or attempt to do brain spotting on their own. Um, I am all about getting to the hardest crevices of life in the safest way possible, in the safest way and in a way that feels the most tolerable and to raise awareness and resiliency within the person that they can do this and that they're not alone in it. So in a nutshell, that's an answer to a lot of questions, and I hope I answered them in a way that matters to you, in a way that you are able to understand it, and maybe even get a better sense of what it is like to be in the office with a therapist who is doing brain spotting with you, why it is so important and of value to be able to do trauma processing work together and find that freedom that you're looking for on the other side. I always encourage more questions, put them in the comments. Um, I love the curiosity about this, so ask away. And as always, thank you for checking in with your wellness. I'll see you soon.